Hello, my name is Allie. I want to share a few things with you just before we jump right into the message. First, be sure to fill out the connection card that's in the seat right in front of you so we can keep in touch. Just drop it off in the offering basket as it comes by. We want to get connected and learn how we can best serve you in the future. Make sure on your way out of service that you grab a few invite cards to hand out to your friends and family that don't have a church home. Let's invite them in and make them feel welcome. Let's grow our church together. Be sure to download our church app to stay up to date. You can read your Bible, get sermon notes, get updates, and get financially right from the app. And it is available to download on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Follow us on social media. Let's get connected. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Be sure to visit our website at www.redemptioncg.org for more great resources. As we get ready to give generously in just a moment, you can give three different ways. Online at www.redemptioncg.org forward slash give, in the church app, or in the offering. There are envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you. Thank you for watching. We are so glad you are here. Welcome home. If you have your Bible, turn with me to John chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. I hope you brought your Bible this morning. You can't fight without your sword. John chapter 8, verse 31. God, we give you praise this morning. We give you thanks for what you're doing in our hearts already and, and how you're stirring. And God, as we're getting ready for, for women's breakfast and kids' camps and, and all the kinds of things that we're getting ready to do, God, this summer. And, but God, we just lay aside all those distractions right now and God, we focus on your word. God, give us eyes to see what we need to see this morning. God, give us ears to hear what we need to hear and give us a heart that's soft and teachable this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. And somebody said amen. John chapter 8, verse 31, talking about freedom this morning. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you'll be made free? And Jesus answered them. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I want to talk for, for a little while about free indeed and how important it is for us to, to live in, 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 in freedom. And, and so go with me, go with me, Ephesians. Ephesians. 
Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Paul writes to the church of Ephesus and he says this in verse 26 of chapter 4. He says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who has need. And then he continues to go further and says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification or building up, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So, so we need to, oh, let me go a little further. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And so he's, so he's talking about this freedom in John 8 and Ephesians 4. He's talking about, about freedom and that we're to give no place to the devil. And there's a couple of doors that the, that the devil would love to open for you. And, and we're going to talk about them. Go with me. First, John. I'm laying lots of scripture down. Go with me first, John, chapter 2. Verse 15. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. He says this, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hello? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in, for all that is in the world, the lust of the, here it is, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not the Father, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lusts of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So he says, listen, listen, these are the things that are in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So, so if we were to look at number one, the, the lust of the flesh, that's our passions. Right? It's, if we looked at the lust of the eyes, that's our possessions. And if we looked at the pride of life, that's our position. I, I look at it like this, is, is, the, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's, it, it's the girls, it's the guts, it's the glory. It, it's the, it's the, I'm sorry, it's the, it's, the, it's the girls, it's the gold, it's the glory. And, and, and so we have to be careful about, about our passions and our possessions and our position because really what he's saying is, is I want you to be careful with your flesh. In other words, you need to deny your flesh. Just because it's visible, we don't have to look at it. That's a good spot to say amen. Is, 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 is there's three major doors... Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And so we're going to have to learn how to, show, if we're going to be successful Christians, and if we're going to be victorious and not carnal people, we're going to have to learn how to handle, handle the lust of our flesh. The, the, the lust of our eyes. And the pride of life. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to learn how to bridle our passions. Just because we feel it doesn't mean we have to give into it. Just because I'm attracted to it doesn't mean I need to say yes to it. Amen. Just because I'm proposition don't mean I need to say yes to it. And I need to be careful how I put my what what, what positions I put myself in, so I don't have to. Come on. That's right. I, I tell my 16 and 17 year old boys, 
if you don't get, listen, I'm going to be real this morning. If you don't put, if you don't get in the backseat of a car with a girl, right. then you're not going to have to. That's right. If you just don't put yourself in there to begin with, you won't have to worry about That's right. making some decisions in a few minutes. Amen. Hello? Amen. If I'm an alcoholic, I'm not going to go to the bar That's right. and sit and drink Dr. Pepper with my friends. That's right. I'm not going to put myself in a position of potential compromise. That's right. In fact, I just read, give no place to the devil. Don't you think he just... Yeah. Yeah. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little things that we allow. Come on. And we have to be on our game. Listen, and allow the Holy Spirit to, to work on us and to move in us because, because, because the devil will only fight you where you're weakest at. And so if you're weak in that area, you just don't go to that area. You, you just don't, you just, you have to be careful because let me tell you, the devil wants to open up some doors and it's, and it has to do with our passions and the lust of our flesh. Everything that you see now on television is sensual. Yep. Yeah. Everything that you, most music today is, is sensual and it appeals to the side of our flesh. And we're going to have to learn, we're going to have to learn how, to, if you're going to be victorious in this area, you're going to have to learn how to cut some things off. That's really why God was talking about circumcision so much. It wasn't just the law. That's right. But he talks now in the New Testament of a circumcision of the heart. Right. That God is wanting to cut away some excesses of our lives, to, to peel back the unnecessary things of our lives, to get to the to get to the core of the thing. And I believe that if we allow God to to to, to circumcise some excesses off our lives. We, we, we got, Part of the lust of the flesh is, I wrote this down. Part of the lust of the flesh is excuses. I'm so tired of excuses. I'm so, Pastor, I smoke pot because I have anxiety. Are you serious? Are we still fighting this? Oh, we got quiet in here. I hugged a couple of you this morning and I got the munchies. I hope I have some Cheetos in my, in my office when I'm done today. Jesus helps me with my anxieties. I am, I am still, Rennie, I'm still enough of the old school to believe that Jesus is the answer to all of my problems. Right. Amen. And if we keep looking to the world to fix our problems, we are in trouble. Right. If we keep looking to the world or looking to a bottle or looking to a pill or looking to a person who can fix all my problems. If I could just get married, all my problems will be, oh my God. <laughs> Did you fall off a truck? Yeah. Did you bump your stinking head? No, you just inherited another problem. Oh, come on. Don't act like, don't act like you ain't never had no problem in your marriage. Just because you're sitting next to him. Praise Jesus. My wife is a saint. You'll go to hell for lying too. Because I heard y'all fighting in the parking lot when I pulled up this morning. <laughs> Come on. Excuses. It, it, I just drink a little wine every night before I go to bed to help me to sleep. I used to count sheep before I went to sleep. Now I just talk to the shepherd. Amen. Because I found out that the sheep never did nothing for me. But if I can talk to the shepherd, Lerda, then my life will change. Amen. I need to learn how to be stronger than my excuses. Come on. I would come to church, but I'm just too busy. Then you're too busy. Crickets. Cricket. Crickets in here. Crickets in here. Crickets in here. I, I, would, I would serve, but I don't have to. Uh, got to be stronger if I if I'm gonna I'm talking about freedom if I'm gonna be free I'm gonna have to do the things that cause me to be free and stop making excuses for my flesh 
the Bible says to give no room for it. Amen. It says deny your flesh. In fact, Jesus said it best. He said, take up your cross and follow me. In other words, he said, you're going to have to get rid of your flesh because a cross gets rid of flesh. Yes. Because a cross kills. A cross is sacrifice. And if you're going to make it, you're going to have to sacrifice some things that you want. Uh -huh. For some things that you need. That's right, yeah. You may not want to come to church, but honey, you need to come to church. Right. You may not want a pastor that speaks truth to you, but you need a pastor who speaks to you. What you want is a candy is a candy coated sermon that tells you how good you are. And as long as you pay your tithes and come to church, you'll be fine. But what you need is a pastor that will look you right in the face and call you a mess. Yes. Oh, I think I'm being called to another church. No. <laughs> then you'll never be free. That's right. Listen to me. The word offends me. This thing offends me. This thing gets all up on my Kool-Aid. Yes. This thing messes me up and says, Roy, you're wrong. That's right. Whenever I find something in the Bible that, that points to me that, 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 that there's, there, there's a wrong, I have to assume it's me that's wrong, not, the, not God's word. Amen. Preach it. If it offends me, that means I am wrong, right. not God. That's right. Come on, this world has nothing for us, and it will trick us, and it will trip us up. Will. Somebody recently said, "Well, how come you don't preach on the how come you don't preach on the enemy and the schemes of the enemy so much?" Because he's a trickster and he'll change. But if I can get you to know the truth, it's the truth that sets you free. Yeah. Listen, he'll keep coming up with more lies and more lies and more lies and more lies. No, if I can teach you the truth, yeah. it's the truth that sets you free. Right. Not, 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 well, I want to learn about the enemy. Why? That's right. Why? So he can lie to you some more? Right. I've told you this over and over again, and if you want a new story, you're going to have to get a new pastor. <laughs> but I, I've said this over and over and over again, but it's just so true. Yep. When I was a manager of a bank years ago, I would teach our new tellers, the, 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 the people in front that was handing out them, dealing with cash all day. I would take them into the back into the safe room and I would get about a million dollars out of the safe. As much money as I could, cash as I could, as I could gather. And the FBI allowed us for training purposes with Chase Bank would allow us to have several counterfeit bills on hand for training purposes with our tellers. And so what I, what I would do is I would get a, I would get a huge stack of real money and, and blindfold them. And every now and then I would sprinkle in a counterfeit bill every now and then into this huge stack of money. And I would blindfold the tellers and they're sitting there in the safe. And I say, okay, just, just, just feel every bill and set it aside like you're counting it. I know you can't count it because you can't see the denominations, but the denominations at this point don't matter. It's, I want you to feel the texture of the bill. And I want you to get so used to the texture of the real bill. When you find the counterfeit, stop and tell me that you have found the counterfeit. Good. And so they're sitting there with this huge wad of cash and they're doing this. And I say, okay, so when you feel the counterfeit, tell me. Oop. Roy, here's the counterfeit. All right, thank you. And I pull it out. Keep counting. Oop. Here's the counterfeit. What I was teaching them was different than what they wanted. They wanted me to teach them, the tellers wanted me to teach them about every little counterfeit that has come through our system. Well, the counterfeits always change. Yep. But one thing about the real money is the real money doesn't change. Amen. Good. It's the same texture. It's the same feel. It's the same essence. And so what I did was I was getting used to having, having, having feeling, uh, feeling the, the real bill. And then they could point out the fake. It's just the same way in Christianity, y'all. Yep. If, you, if you feel and if you touch and if you taste and if you're around the, the real for long enough, you'll be able to point out the fake. Woo. But I'm not going to spend all of my time talking to you about the fake when I can just talk to you about the truth. Yes. Come on. And, and, so, and so, 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 so some of y'all are spending all your time and energy trying to find out the devil when you just need to be working on who the Lord is. And the Lord will show to you, the Lord will show to you who the devil is. Come on. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to get to know the texture and the essence of the Holy Spirit in my life. Because there's a certain feel. 
Yeah. There, 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 there's a certain there's a there's a, a certain essence about about that Holy Spirit that is moving and breathing in my life. And if I just get around the truth long enough, He'll expose the lie. Ooh, amen. And He does. But you know what? Some of y'all are so used to playing with the devil. Ooh. Come on. I gotta I gotta get around. The lust of the eyes, the, the, the possessions. I, I've got to, I've got to deal with the possession issue in my life, and 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 one of the things that God does in order to 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 help help us fight with the lust of our eyes is to deal with us about our possessions. There's nothing wrong with having possessions as long as your possessions don't have you. Amen. Come on. And so we need to learn how to handle our possessions and learning how to handle our possessions is learning is learning how to be givers because that keeps us humble and that keeps us that keeps us soft before God and that keeps us reliant on God instead of us. When, when, when we learn how to be givers, come on, it takes the focus off of us. And, and, and I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta be careful there that, that I don't want to own anything that I can't give away. Amen. I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be stingy, but, but giving also, listen to me, giving also, and I've already taken the offering, so don't act like I'm going to take it again. Right. Listen, we have a policy in this church. We don't take two offerings. Right. We take one in the beginning and then we're done. We ain't passing the bucket again. So don't just, some of you need to go, We ain't passing it again. I'm teaching on it, but we ain't passing it again. And that you ought to say amen. Amen. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to deal with those things, and I'm gonna have to deal with the pride of life. I'm gonna have to deal with humility, with humility. And so this is what I'm gonna do. Number one, I need to learn how I need to learn how to have integrity. Yeah. Proverbs 5, 7 through through 10 says, Now then, my sons, listen to me, and do not turn aside from what I say. To keep a path far from her. Do not go near her door, the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and toil, and your toil enrich the house of another. He's talking about integrity. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14. I kind of liked it in the message version. I read the message version this week and I kind of liked it. I don't use this to to teach theologically, but I like the way that they wrote it. Romans 6, 12 through 14 says, that means that you must not give sin a vote in the way that you conduct your lives. Don't give sin the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live. After all, you're not living under that old <laughs> tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. Yeah. And so what we need to do with integrity is we need to learn how to say yes to God and no to the enemy of our soul. Right. Amen. And we're going to be integrity. So if we say we're going to do something, we need to do it. Come on. If we're going to say we're going to be there, we're going to be there. If we say we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Yeah. If you borrow a tool from somebody and you break their tool, you replace it with one better. Right. That's right. Integrity is this. Integrity, you're a good tipper. That's right. I'm not talking about money yet, but I'm, I, that's number two. But Amen. we ought to be the best tippers. Yes. Listen, we ought to be the, we ought to be the easiest customers in the restaurant. Yes. Right. Kindest. Somebody recently <laughs> at, at a restaurant said to me, they said, aren't you the pastor of Redemption Church? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, she said, I knew it. I said, how did you know it? She says, because you're always so kind. You're always so nice. You're always so happy. Yes. Come on. That's the distinction. Listen, let your light so shine. Yes. Our light ought to shine and we ought to just be, we ought to be, come on. God's called us to be different, yes. to not to be bridled by our passions or our possessions, come on, or our positions. Amen. So hold on to our integrity and learn how to say no and say, no, I'm going to walk in the uprightness of God.
And just because I'm, I'm, I'm in the world, I don't need to be of the world. Amen. And I am going to be separate. I am going to be different. And I'm going to be counted for in Jesus' name. Just because all my friends are doing it, it. Listen to me, young people. Just because your friends are doing it, it doesn't mean you need to do it. Right. Come on. Right. Just because someone asks you to, it don't mean you need to say yes. You need to learn how to close those doors to freedom. Number two, generosity. One of the things I can do to fight the lust of the eyes or our possessions is this, is, is to be generous. We ought to be generous people. God has given us so much. We ought to be generous. Genesis chapter 4, verse 2 through 7. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some fruit of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. And the Lord looked, at, looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but Cain on his offering, it did not look, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face so downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? If you do not what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Hello? Amen. But you must rule over it. Cain was just going to give God anything. Just, I'm just going to give you some of, the, some of the labor from the ground, but that's not what God asked for. And if you do what God asks for, then God will bless you and God will look at you with favor. Yes. And that hasn't ceased. Malachi 3, 10, and 11, and I can give you lots of other scriptures. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be not room enough to receive it. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So he's saying, if you do what I tell you to do, I will bless you. So that means we can't, we can't expect God to bless us if we're not doing what he's asking us right. to do. That's right. And, and if I want him to bless my, if I want him to bless my life, then I need to have him in every area of my life. Yes. If I want him to bless my marriage, then he needs to get in my marriage. If I want him to bless my kids, he needs to get in my kids. Yes. Right. If I need him to bless my home, he needs to be welcome in my home. If I want him to bless my health, I need to. He needs to be Lord over. Listen, if the Lord is Lord, Lord, meaning has control over every area of my life, it's every area of my life. Listen, we, when we sing that song that he's Lord over all, he's not Lord over some. Because can I tell you, if God is not Lord over all, then he's Lord over none. Because my God is a jealous God and he wants all of us. Yes. Not just a part of us. And, and so when we look at this, when we think, okay, I have the lust of the flesh. I need to deal with my flesh. Come on. And I need to deal with my, the lust of my eyes or my possessions. Can I, can I say it like this? When it comes to money, and I've already taken the offering, but, but, but I find it... I find it difficult for us to, to, to grasp is, is when it comes down, it comes down to trusting God with our finances. It really comes down to a heart issue, not a money issue, about money. But if I but listen to me and listen to my heart this morning, is if I can trust God with my soul. <laughs> Come on, brother. That's good. Listen to me. If I can trust God with my soul, then can't I trust him with my money? Amen. Listen, I've never seen him. I've never touched him. I've never smelled him. I've never been to heaven before. I wasn't there at the resurrection. But I believe with all of my heart, and I believe that most of you do too, that when, when the Bible says that, that, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the yes. Lord. In other words, my last breath on earth is going to be my next breath in heaven with him. Yes. And if I believe that, then why can't I trust God with my 10%? Right. Well, pastor, that's Old Testament. 
Really? No, it's in the New Testament. In fact, New Testament says that all of our possessions belong to him. Yes. We're just a steward, steward. Yes. of the hundred. So, so if you want to get technical, it's all technically his, and we're just stewarding the... Yes, do yeah. I. I mean, don't, don't, there's, there's more scripture about money than there is heaven and hell and salvation combined. Yeah. Why? Because he knew it would be an issue in our lives. Yeah. And so listen, if we're going to, if we're going to, if we, if we're going to, if we're going to truly believe God, then we need to truly believe God in every area of our lives. If I can trust God with my soul, then why can't, if I make a thousand dollars a week, let's just make it easy. Why can't I trust him then with my hundred bucks? That's right. Absolutely. If I could trust him with my soul and my wife and my kids and my health and my, 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 if I could trust him with my everything, then why can't, then the money part should be easy. Yeah. And, and what I mean by 10%, I mean by 10%, I don't mean, we don't tip God. I've wondered for years, how do you live off 10 bucks a week? How do you live off a hundred bucks a week when you pay $10 in tithes? I used to do it. Come on, y'all. We don't tip God, we tithe. Listen to me. We tip God, we don't... We, 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 some of us tip God instead of tithe. Because if, if, if y'all can live off 100 bucks a week, then you need to teach me how to live. I spent more than that in gas this week. Oh, my goodness. I paid $5 for gas this week, a gallon. Oh, my goodness. So you see what I'm saying? Is it, is it seems kind of hypocritical of us, if I could go that far to say, that we, we can't believe God with our money, but we can believe him with our soul and believe him with our kids' souls and our grandparents' souls. And why can't we just trust God that we, you know, sometimes it's hard. It's hard being a, a person of faith because you're going to have to do some things that just don't seem right. to the naked eye. It don't make sense. When Molly came to me, how long ago, a year and a half ago? She came to me a year and a half ago and she goes, Pastor, I have enough money to pay my tithes or to pay a bill. Remember that? And you shared that on a Wednesday night. Say it again. She, yeah. She came to me. She said, Pastor, I can pay my electric bill or I can pay my tithes. What do I do? Now, I've known this mama for, she's been a mama to me for 30 years. I looked her in the face and I said, we're going to trust God. Amen. 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 He never fell. I said, pay your tithes and watch God work in mysterious ways. But the, I don't care who you are. That's kind of scary sometimes. Yes, I get it. I get it. I'm, I, I'm a man too. I put on my pants one leg at a time like you. I've done it. And she said, okay. I said, let's pray. We prayed together. And she did it. Tell the story. Right. And it, and it worked. Like a refund check or something, wasn't it? Yeah. But but God makes a way. Amen. God 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 makes a way. And and if we can and if we, we we so that's that's what I'm getting at. We we've got to get to that place where we can trust God in. Yes. And I'm not just talking money, y'all. All things. I'm not talking money, y'all. I'm talking when the doctor looks at you across the table and says, "I think that you have you have your both of your lungs are full of blood clots." Yes. Just a month ago. Oh, what? We're going to run some more tests because, Pastor, I think that your lungs are full of blood clots. 
and we need to run this test very quickly because if one of those blood clots was to let loose, if one goes to your heart or one goes to your brain, you'll be dead in minutes. Yep. Seconds. No saving yet. Just a month ago. That's where the rubber meets the road, y'all. I've got two kids and a beautiful wife. I've got a church and a church in Culiacan, Sinaloa. I've got 33 other churches. Come on. And, and you have to say, God, I'm going to trust. That better be Jesus. God, God, I'm going to trust you with my health. Yes. And God, and God, if you're going to keep me on this earth, then you're going to have to hold those blood clots back. Dissolve them. You're going to have to hold them back from hitting my heart or hitting my lungs or, or, or hitting my brain. You're going, to have to, you're going to have to hold me, God, because the doctors have done all they can do. But I serve the great physician, and, and he numbers my days, and I will not go one day earlier than I'm supposed to go in the name of Jesus. And so, God, you'll hold me right where I need to go, and I'm going to trust in you. Yes, I thank God for Dr. Ridge, but at the end of the day, Dr. Ridge is not my source. God is my source, and he holds my... And so I don't, tr so I don't trust in Dr. Ridge at Optima Medical. I have, to, I have to trust in God. I have to, about, about finances and my children and, and my wife, and I have to trust in God. I cannot trust in anything else besides him. And so that's why it's easy. If I can trust him with my soul, then certainly I can trust him with my $100 a week. Amen. And in fact, that's, that's just, a, and then we get hung up over tithe and tenth and, and this and that or whatever. But, but can I just tell you, and I'm not taking another offering, that's just the beginning Yes. That's just what's required. That's not counting the, the benefits of being able to be a blessing and to give offerings over and above my 10%. Yes. Because it's not just, see, it's not just, but it's not just about, it's not just about the percentage. It's about the heart. That's right. Is, is I'm going to give to help finance the kingdom because that's how God chose to finance the kingdom. And I'm going to do it because this is my house where I get fed. This is the house where my kids get ministered to. This is the house where my grandkids are getting saved and they're getting baptized in that water. This is where my kids go to camp. This is where, where, where we see kids getting picked up off our buses every single week. This is where we give money to, 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 to Culiacan, Sinaloa, so that we can win people to Jesus in Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. This is where people in Africa can find their lives and, and we can support orphanages and we can see lives change for the glory of God. This is where we can see other churches in our cities and, and in our country and us to build another church. Come on, somebody of, of, of life changing people's hearts and, and God getting into people's lives and changing and seeing addictions break off of people, seeing people get free and seeing people get saved and people get filled with the Holy Spirit and seeing lives changed for the glory of God. That's why I want to give. Amen. Not just because God told me that I have to. That's right. But this is how God chose, chooses to, to, to finance the kingdom. And so, oh, my God, if I could be a part of that. Because if you look in your checkbook, you'll find out what you love. Yeah, right. Hello? You'll find out what you love real quick by what you spend your money on. Come on. It says, I love Jesus and I love tacos. Amen. So, I, so in order to combat the lust of my eyes, I'm going to be generous. The last thing I'm going to do... Is humility. <laughs> Revelation 3, 7, and 8 says, What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. He says this, I know your deeds. He's talking to the church. He says, I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. And I know that you have little strength, that you have kept my word and not, not denied my name. So, so there's open doors that we have that we're going to have to be careful and we're going to have to be hum 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 humble about John 3, 30 says, and I love this. This is John the Baptist. He's saying Jesus must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. Yeah. Or, or, or the New King James Version says that he must increase and I must decrease. Yeah. Come on. And, and, and so, so we know that if our head gets puffed up too much and we get too prideful about us, no, Jesus needs to increase and I need to decrease. I need to get low 
so he can be high. And if I'm going to, so how I'm going to stay humble is I need to, de- to, to develop a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Yes. Because prayer has a way of keeping you low. Fasting has a way of you denying your flesh, come on, and keeping you low. When your flesh gets out of whack, the best thing that you can do is fast. And the word fast in, the, in, 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 in Hebrew actually means to shut your mouth. It means to shut your mouth to food. And most, I would say some of us, have issues with food. And the best way we can deny our flesh is to deny our flesh of tacos. Right? Where we deny our flesh and it causes us to be low. And what we're saying to King's stomach is you will not have rule over me. Listen, I will not allow anything to have rule over me. I'm not going to allow my stomach to rule over me. So I'm going to fast and I'm going to push away the plate for a few days so I can get my flesh back under control again. I'm going to give. Number two, I'm going to give because my flesh gets out of control and I get selfish. And in order to keep continue to break me of my selfishness, I'm going to give. I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away because I'm not going to be selfish. So that's what tithing does for us is it keeps us from being selfish. That's right. And then I'm going to deal with my passions. I'm going to deal with my flesh and give no place to the devil. And so I'm going to, I'm going to work on those areas where I'm weak in my flesh and I'm going to shore up those areas in Jesus name. Yes. I will not give into my flesh and I will fast and I will stop and I will keep my eyes from seeing any unholy thing. I've got to learn how to keep my eyes and keep my ears. Come on. So then I can keep my heart. But if I keep putting junk in my eyes and junk in my ears, then junk's going to come out. Have you ever heard that saying garbage in garbage out? Well, honey, you keep putting garbage in. You might as well just expect garbage out because if you put, if you keep putting toxic things in, listen, None of us would ever, if there was a bottle of poison here, none of us ever would, 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 well, maybe some of us would. I know some of y'all. Intentionally drink a, drink a a jug of poison because you know what it's going to do to you. Right? Well, why do we keep drinking the poison of that television? Drinking the poison of that toxic music. Drinking the poison of that pornography on your phone. Entertaining so-and-so texting you late at night when you're lonely. Come on. I'm going to go there this morning. I'll go there this morning. Get down to it. Get it. Go ahead. Come on. We're drinking, we're drinking poison. And we act like nothing's ever going to hurt us. When you're playing with fire. I I told my kids when they were little, when we were camping, I said, son, if you keep playing with that fire, you're going to get burned. No, dad, I'm tough. I'm tough. I'm tough. And, and so we, so we love, we love when we go camping, we love making s'mores. Come on. And in order to have a really good s'more, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta burn the marshmallow just right. And I'm not even sure what marshmallows are made out of because they're flammable. They're really flammable. But you got to toast them just right before you stick them on the graham cracker with the, with the chocolate and you squish them together and you mush it all together and then it becomes toxic fire into your lungs, you know. And, and so Greta fashioned them. She, she, she cut off and she bent, she bent some uh, clothes hangers, some, some metal clothes hangers, and she told the boys, well, just burn off the paint, you know, the plastic off the, you know, not toxic at all, just burn off the plastic. <laughs> And, and so I said, well, wait, I said, babe, metal is a great conductor of heat. And if they, if, and so I said, boys, you can't keep the, you can't keep the, the, the metal, the, 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 the clothes hanger in the fire for very long, because if you do, the heat will travel up and it will burn your hand. Yeah. It's a good conductor of, of heat. Dad, I'm strong. I'm good. I'm strong, dad. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> son, let me, son, I'm warning you. It's going to get hot and it's going to burn you, son. Dad, this is Jordan. (laughs) He's just like your daddy. He says, he turns around and as he has it still in the fire, 
And he goes, Dad, I'm five. I'm five. <laughs> Anybody ever had a five-year-old before? Oh, yeah. Five-year-old boy. <laughs> Just about that time, he turns around. Ah, and drops it. He looks back at me and goes, that got hot. <laughs> and he had a perfect little burn across his little finger. Yep. <laughs> and I started singing an old country song by Randy Travis called, I told you so. Oh, I told you so. Never heard of it. <laughs> it's because you're black. <laughs> So maybe later your white wife <laughs> will show you that old white song. I got you. <laughs> She'll shoot Randy Travis from the 90s. Yeah. I said, son, I tried to tell you yeah. you're going to get burned. All night long. So he goes over to the he goes over to the ice chest and he gets ice and he's now he's babying his finger the whole night when it was needless. He never needed to burn himself if he would have listened. Amen. Some of us under the sun, and I'm done. Some of us under the sound of my voice this morning are nursing some burns that you never should have had to burn yourself with. Come on. Because you didn't listen. Come on. It's going to burn you. It's going to burn you. Father, I love you. And I just ask God that you will help us in the areas of our lives to deal with the lust of our flesh, the lust of our eyes, the pride of life. To be humble enough to listen. To be selfless enough to be generous. God, to deal with our flesh and not to give in to its lusts. Oh God, help us to be in this world, not of it. Yes. Help us, God, to be separate. Help us, God, in the name of Jesus, to listen so that we don't get burned. Yes, Lord. Help us, God, to recover from the burns. But, oh, God, help us in the name of Jesus to, to stop getting burned over and over and over again because we refuse to listen to those in authority, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, God our Father, Jesus the Son, our pastors, our leaders, those protecting us from the burns. Oh, God, help us. Teach us, God, your ways, and we'll be quick to give you thanks, God, and praise. With your heads bowed, maybe you're here, maybe you're watching me on video today, and you say, Pastor, I've never asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I've never asked him to come into my life to save me, to forgive me of my sins, to wash me clean. If that's you right where we are this morning, will you just pop up your hand? I want to pray for you this morning. There's one, there's two. Amen. Is there anybody else this morning? Is there anybody else this morning? Hey Amen. You can put your hands down. Thank you. This is what I want you to do. I just want you to say this simple prayer with us this morning. Romans 10, 9 says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So we're going to call upon him and we're going to ask him to save us. So the whole church is going to help you pray. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, ask right I ask you right now to come into my heart and save me forgive me of my sins and wash me clean and help me to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus name amen amen, amen. you receive that amen